This is the second section of chapter six for the hypothesis test. And this test uh, section is on hypothesis testing for the variance of a normal distribution. So this section is all about testing to see if the variance of a sample gives evidence to suggest that the variance of a population has changed. So we're taking a sample from a population, we're measuring its variance and then doing a hypothesis test to see whether the variance or there's evidence to suggest that the variance of the population has changed. Now you can compare this with what you did in or are about to do in the Stats and Mechanics Year 2 book, section 3.7, where we measured the mean of a sample and use the mean of the sample to work out whether the mean or there's evidence to suggest that the mean of the population has changed. So this is a hypothesis test about the mean of the population. Uh, this is a hypothesis test on the variance of the population. So first of all, let's start with H0 and H1. So H0 is always going to be that uh, sigma squared is equal to the variance of the population. So this will be given in the question. So this will be some sort of number. And H1 is always that uh, sigma squared is not equal to the variance of the population. So these hypothesis tests are not about whether the variance has increased or decreased. It's all about whether the variance has changed. So H0 will always be that sigma squared is not equal to the variance of the population. And again, this will be the same number that we've written down in H0. The next thing we're going to do is to calculate our test statistic. And that's going to be n minus 1 times by uh, s squared over sigma squared, where n is our sample size. Uh, S squared is our sample variance. Now, if we're given summary statistics like the sum of x and the sum of x squared, if they're given, then uh, that's going to be an unbiased estimate. And that's going to be divided by our population variance. And next thing we're going to do is to see if our test statistic is in the critical region or not. So normally, uh, uh, diagram is going to help. Now the way that we find our critical values is by realizing when we did the last section that this calculation here is distributed as a chi-squared distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom and all we need to do is to look up uh, uh, the values with the appropriate um, percentage in these brackets and that will give us the critical values. And then once we've got the critical values, then the next step would be to say whether we accept or reject H0. And then uh, after that, then to write uh, some sort of conclusion. So remember that in this section here, in the middle, actually, I'll just draw it this way. In this section, this is where we would accept H0. It's the same with most of these hypothesis testing questions. So accept H0 here. And then it's going to be in the areas at the end here in the tails, there'll be the areas where we reject H0. So very similar to what we've done before. Calculate critical values, see where the critical values are, um, come up with a conclusion. I would always draw a diagram. I think it just helps you see exactly what's going on. It's very easy in the exam to uh, accidentally uh, compare two values and and get a conclusion wrong. A diagram, you know, you're going to get it right. Hopefully, 95% of the time, hopefully. Example three, a random sample of 12s or observations, there's my value of n, n is 12, is taken from a normal distribution with a variance of sigma squared. So that's the population variance. The unbiased estimate for the population variance is calculated as 0 0.015. So that's going to be our S squared. Test at the 5% significance level, the null hypothesis that sigma squared is equal to 0 0.025 against the alternative hypothesis 
that the uh, sigma squared or the population variance is not equal to 0 0.025. So full hypothesis test starting with H0 and H0 is going to be that the population variance is uh, 0 0.025 and H1 is going to be that the population variance is not equal to 0 0.025 and that's always going to be the case not equal to you'll find in most questions that it will basically tell you what H0 and H1 are. Next I'm going to do my little uh, drawing here, my little sketch just to help me out, make sure I accept or reject correctly. So here's my chi-square distribution like this. Seeing as it, we're testing at the 5% level, that means the area of the tails combined is 5%. It's always going to be a two-tail test because it's not equal to. And I can put down that this area is 2.5. This area is 2.5%. And remember with this upper tail here, I'll actually be using 97.5%. So now we'll calculate our test statistic. And our formula for that is n minus 1 times by s squared divided by sigma squared. So n minus 1, 12 minus 1, 11 times by s squared. So that's 0 0.015 divided by sigma squared 0 0.025. Now that gives us 33 over 5 which is exactly equal to 6.6. .6. Now we want to find out if this is in the critical region or not. So now we're going to calculate our critical values. And this is going to be straightforward because you're just going to look these up in the table. So remember, um, the critical values are going to be uh, chi-squared distribution with um, n minus 1 degrees of freedom, so 11 degrees of freedom. And we want to look up the 2.5% 2 2 value. And we want to look up the 97.5% value. So this time I've written them as decimals, but you could write them as percentages. Don't forget to put the percentage signs in. I think on the previous example, I forgot to put the percentages in. So I'm going to again use the percentage points table, not the CG50. You can use either. Now, I think for these questions, it's actually quicker to use the tables. So let's go down 11 degrees of freedom, 2.5%. So that's 21.920. We'll scroll across to the left. And we want to find a 97.5, that's 3.816. So these are my critical values. So I'm just going to put them on my graph here. So we've got 3.816 and then 21.920. Now we had a test statistic of 6.6. .6. So 6.6 .6 is not in a critical region, is it? Yeah. So we need to show this. So our 6.6 .6 is actually greater than 3.816 and less than 21.920. So I'll just put it in purple, so our test statistic is going to be somewhere here, like our 6.6. .6. Let's put that in. Okay, so then I can say that, um, therefore, or since actually would be better. Let's do that over here. So since 6.6 .6 is not in the critical region, and I've actually shown that by my inequality there. Um, 
we can say there is insufficient evidence or not enough evidence sufficient evidence to reject H0 therefore there has been no change change in the variance change in the population variance based on our sample of 12 observations so you should now be able to do exercise 6b on pages 148 to 149 of the textbook